Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about bulk enabling service health alerts for all of the various subscriptions you may have in your organization. Now I did a previous video where I talked about how you can turn on service health alerts, how you could then notify certain people, and that's fantastic if we can make sure every subscription has people that will follow those directions. But what about if we don't? Maybe we need as an organization to lay down those alert rules and action groups to notify the right people. Now, if I think about our common structure, we'll have certain subscriptions. Now, one of the key control plane activities and capabilities we have is that whole role-based access control. Now, there are two key roles. I can think about there's the owner role and then there's the contributor role. Maybe you have others, doesn't matter. But there might be key roles at the subscription scope that they're responsible for that subscription. And so when I think about, okay, well, I want to have this alert rule that I'm gonna create. And that alert rule is looking for in the activity log my service health related alerts, well, who do I want to notify? Ideally, it wants to notify an action group that's gonna email those roles. Or maybe one of them, maybe it's both of them. So I'm gonna configure that configuration because that would then enable me to bulk deploy this thing. Trying to use a static email address won't work very well because it's very unlikely I wanna notify the same person for every sub in my entire organization because if I think at a larger scale, so well, we think about at the very top, we have our Microsoft Entra ID tenant, what was our Azure AD tenant. And then remember under that, I have an entire hierarchy. So I have things like the root management groups. These are all management groups. And then I have other management groups, maybe it's organizational or geography, different types of subscriptions, whatever that structure may be, I have this whole management group structure. I have all these different subscriptions and it's highly likely I wanna notify different people who are responsible for different subscriptions. Now there's different ways to achieve this. Azure policy is one option because what Azure policy can do is it can check for hey, does this exist? And if it doesn't, it can do a deploy if not exist operation, which can push an ARM template. In this case, it could go and create um, this alert rule and action group, and it could absolutely target, hey, I wanna target these RBAC roles. Now, this actually exists for us already. If I wanted to take the policy approach, if I jump over here, so these are part of these um, initiatives, and the one I'm looking at right now is this service health, for example, health advisory, and they have a JSON template that's using that deploy if not exists, and I'm not gonna go through the entire template, but very, very at a basic level, what it's looking for is, hey, I'm checking if this is a subscription, and I haven't disabled monitoring via some tag, and then it's gonna deploy if not exists, so that's its effect, and it's gonna go and look. And what it's gonna go and look for, the existence conditions of, hey, you have this activity log alert set up. So it's gonna go and check a number of factors. And ultimately, if it doesn't, well, then it's gonna deploy this configuration. And what this configuration basically does is it's gonna go ahead and create a deployment that will go and create the activity log alert for the service health advisories. And that's gonna go and create an action group. Now with this action group, what they have done is they're configuring it to do email addresses. I think that has some limited use for a very large scale deployment. So I probably don't want the same email um, notified for everyone. But one of the things I can very, very easily do is instead of doing email address, as I've got in the comments of my script here, I can ex instead use ARM role receivers. 
And then, for example, there are common GUIDs for the role. So this is the owner role GUID, this is the contributor. So I could switch that out and instead use this. So if I was to use this instead, it would now email the roles associated with that subscription instead of emailing a specific person. So I think that would be a more useful operation. So now if I have lots of different subscriptions and each subscription has its own owners and contributors, I'll target those. But one of the challenges with the way that works is it's only gonna email users that have been assigned owner or users that have been assigned contributor. And very often we don't assign it to individual users, especially things like contributor, we'll assign that to a group and then add users into the group so they wouldn't get notified. Additionally, what I've seen in a number of organizations is, hey, I've got lots of different subscriptions and they stamp down the same group at lots and lots of different subscriptions. Now, ideally we wouldn't do that. If there's a certain group that requires the same role at lots of subscriptions, well, in an ideal world, what I would do is I would apply that R back at a management group level instead. I would say, hey, I want a certain group to be a contributor in every subscription. That would get inherited down. Now, I don't have to replicate that on every single subscription stamp that. Then it's much easier to update or whatever I need to do in the future. So if you find you're adding the same role to every single subscription, I would probably rethink, do I really need to do that? Or should I maybe just apply the role at a management group level and let it get inherited down? And so that might be a trouble. So I might wanna ignore certain users that may be stamped everywhere or ignore, ignore certain groups. And so what I did is I create the script uh, because I couldn't use the regular policy approach because I can't just email the RBAC role because it might be a group is assigned. If I was to jump over to my environment for a second, I can kind of demonstrate this. So if I was to look at my subscription, for example, if I just go and look at some of the RBAC on one of them, it's not particularly interesting. If you look at role assignments, if I look at my contributor, well, there's a group has been assigned the role. And maybe only some of them are email enabled. And so I just need to add the people in that to be notified. And so what I've done is I've created this script. Now you can use an RBAC approach, the permissions it needs. I have to be able to create an alert and I have to be able to create an action group and I have to be able to create a resource group because these have to live somewhere. And then what it does is basically you just have a file which has got uh, the subscription ID per line. So you just create a file. If you don't know how to create that, a list of them, you could absolutely just run a resource graph query to do that. And I've actually updated this file and I'll show that um, later on. It'll be in the Git repo that actually has that in it. But then one of the things you then do is which roles is it you want to have added? So for me, it's just owner and contributor. I could skip certain groups if I wanted to. So for example here, I'm not skipping any, but maybe I do have that same group stamped everywhere, JL or Avengers or whatever that is, network admins. So I would uncomment this line and comment out the other one, so it would always ignore them. I then set a number of variables. This is just what I'm calling the alert rule, the alert description, the action group name, the short name for the action group, the resource group I'm gonna create um, all of those things. It'll quickly show you uh, how many subscriptions were in your file. So I've kind of manually ran this. So you have to say yes to make sure you've not put in the wrong thing. Now it will just iterate through every subscription. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna change context to that particular, so basically selecting that subscription. It's gonna set its scope to be that subscription. It's then gonna go and check does the resource group exist. If it doesn't, it's gonna create the resource group. And then for each role, it's gonna go and look at, well, who is in that role? Now I've manually forced my role um, to be one of them so I can show you. But if I was to go and look at what that is, we can see, well, there's a whole bunch of different people matching what I showed you in the portal. Some of them are groups, some of them are users. 
And so it's only going to care about if it's a group or a user. And so for each of them, it's going to make sure the assignment is at the subscription scope level, i.e. if it was an RBAC assigned at a management group, it's going to ignore it. I'm not going to want to set up everyone at a higher MG to receive the service health alert. So it has to be an owner or contributor specifically at the subscription level. And then it can do some verbose output if you want. But essentially, it's going to check, hey, if it's a group and it's not one of the ones I want to skip, it's going to go and find out, hey, it's a group, who's in the group. And then it's just going to add in everyone in that group that has an email that's not null, so it has a valid email, it's gonna add them to an array of emails to add. Then if it's a user, hey, go and check what their email is, so it's gonna go and get the user. If their email is not null, well, their email is gonna get added to the ones to add as well. So it's gonna end up just with this whole list of emails to add. It's gonna see, does the action group exist already? If it's not found, it's gonna go and create it. And then it's going to go and create it with an email receiver that we generated from those list of emails, and then just creates the action group. If it can't, then it's going to give you an error message. If that action group does exist, what it's going to do is go and look at, well, who are the current people in that action group? And if there are differences between the current people and who are assigned those roles at the subscription, then it's going to add them together. Now, this was a design choice I made. I considered that maybe you might add manually people who also want to get the service health alerts. So I didn't want to wipe out people you might have manually added. It would be very easy in this code to not bother adding them together. I could absolutely just take out the adding together bit of the code and the emails to add could just be the ones that I found and just replace the action group. So if you wanted to remove people who are no longer in the role, I could essentially just remove that line. And then what it would do is, well, the emails to add is just the people it found. It would create a new email receiver and it would update the action group. And then all it does is go and create the alert rule for the service health and you're done. So that, that's really all it's doing. And if I jump back over for a second, if I was to look at my resource groups, so this is the resource group it's gonna create. I went and deleted, so there's no action group or alert rule in there. And there's only one for one of my subscriptions right now. If I was to actually take the code, and I'm gonna to have to make sure I select the right bit of the code. <laughs> if I go over here, because I've already manually, let's go if we go and set up the variables just to make sure I'm not skipping anything. So I don't want to skip any code. I don't want to skip any subscriptions. Um, I don't want it to prompt me. So then it's just for each sub. So if I just go and manually run all of this just to see, it's going to go through, and you saw it was creating the resource group. Then it's going and looking, okay, the action group wasn't found, it created it. The alert rule is not found, it's creating that. Then it's moved on to the next sub subscription. The resource group was there, but the alert rule was not there, and it's finished. So it's gone and created for two subscriptions, those things. Now the portal can take a minute to update, but if we do refresh, right, so it's not there yet. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we've got two of those resource groups, one for each of my two subscriptions. And if we go and look at the first one, so currently it's empty again. The portal takes a minute to catch up. Oh, there it's shown up. So what we can see is the action group contains, yep, four people. They're the four people that were email enabled. So it's the sum of the users and then the people in the group that had an email address. So that's correctly been configured. And also it created the alert rule to target all of my service health alerts. And my action is to call that action group that we configured. And then in my other subscription, it's done exactly the same thing, but this time the action group will be different people because they were the owners and contributors of that subscription. And once again, it went and created its alert log rule specific to 
Same service health alerts for everything. And now it's calling that. So it's, it's not complicated. The code is not really doing anything uh, super fancy. And it, it's in the repo. And I'm probably going to tweak and play with it. I've actually noticed while I was running this, this is not actually my most recent version. I added some other comments in, so it's just not synced correctly. But I've got the link to the Git um, hub below because the other version, I've got the resource graph query that will actually help you dump out the subscriptions as well. So that is in there. And again, you can rerun this as much as you want. So if I added new owners, new contributors, when I run it the next time, it will just add the sum, it will update the existing action group with the new people. So it's an approach, again, I could absolutely use the policy, and I like policy if I can. The policy calling the template, but it's not gonna work if that's a group assignment. Whereas what I've done here is I'm enumerating, I'm expanding out the groups, I'm looking for the people in the group that have a valid email, and then I, I add them into it. So that's the solution. Um, I hope it's useful. Have a play around and uh, get those service health alerts enabled. Take care.